What is up, App Nation? It is your boy, Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, coming at you with another weekly Friday YouTube live stream where we take a look at your apps, really break down a topic, give you a master class on that topic, and share what's working and give you the latest and greatest in the world of apps. And joining me today is a friend of mine that I've known for so long, ever since I started the podcast and I brought him on so that we can really break down, Hey, here's what I think from a marketing perspective. And here is what Heim would think from a development perspective so that you get the best of both worlds. And so you can figure out, Hey, how much is this new feature that Steve has been talking about? Is it going to cost me? And so without further ado, he is Heim. And I never get his last name right, but just go with Heim. And he is the founder of B7 Dev. All you guys got to do is go to B, the letter B, the number seven, dev.com. If you're looking to get any app development work or web development work as well. Heim, welcome back, my friend. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, Heim. So let's kick it off with this. You know, one of the things that I look at when I'm auditing an app is usually the welcome flow. So what does the welcome flow look like? What are the screens where how many screens there, there are, what are you seeing from a development perspective when you're working with an app? Do they have that? Like how much does that cost to build out these like pretty simple screens before you hit either a pricing page or a sign up page? But well, basically we are talking about a very, uh, I mean, there are several ways to do it. Uh, yeah. Do it, doing it uh, very statically, like, you know, two or three screens for tutorials is really cheap. It's like, I don't know, 10, 15 hours. Uh, just because uh, you need to make uh, all the graphics fit with the different uh, formats, different uh, screen formats, so sizes, resolutions. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have uh, animated, uh, tutorials maybe you can start with a simple static uh, images uh, and then you can jump to to animated uh, tutorial that will take more hours depending of course of the animation but basically if you don't if you don't know how to start you can benchmark the the static tutorials like in this way uh, mm. i will invest more in in a good illustration in a good graphic than in uh, animation because uh, it should be really clear, uh, like those examples, it should be really clear from the start yeah. what you are trying to communicate, okay? So I will invest more on that than on animations. I mean, uh, in this case, less is more, okay? So should, shouldn't be uh, taking more than 15 hours after all. Okay, that's good. That's good to know because I think when, we, when we're looking at apps, you know, one of the things that we've shared in the past is, Hey, you know, 60% of all your in-app purchases are going to come during the onboarding process. And we've theoretically, this is just for one app, but across the board, we've seen anywhere from 50 to 60% of all in-app purchases come from this onboarding sequence. And so we have case studies where I think, you know, you don't want it to be too long, but you want it to be long enough where they get a sense. I would say three to five screens is good enough. And this makes, you know, this, this is pretty simple, right? It's just text, image, continue. Yeah. Text but image the, images, the, the images are, are, are good in this case. I mean, they are not mm. cheap images. Or, I mean, it's, it's, it seems like trivial, but the, those yeah. designs are well, very well done. I mean, this is very important because it's, this is the first thing that the, the potential user will, will see. I mean, you know, you don't install every single app you see around on the market, on the app market, play market. Uh, so the time to conquer the, the, the heart of a user is very short. So the, you can try with the several combinations of tutorials. The, I mean, the, the richer uh, and less images, like three or four is the ideal, okay? Three, I would shoot for three images, but invest yeah. the, in a good illustration, in a good design, okay? It's, it's, well, your examples are, are ideal because I really understand what they are talking about. You have yeah. a few seconds to win they they hurts to 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 keep using the app. Forget about the retention. To keep using the the app for the first time inboard. Got it. The the other thing I want to show here is to kind of break down just for you guys watching. If you guys didn't see this case study, it's on YouTube. But Bart, who tested this, you know, he just showed the pricing page, which I've seen other apps do now, where they just show the pricing page on first open. 
versus adding a couple of different screens. And he saw a 234% increase in revenues. And he kind of gave me a, the data right here. Like you can see the units, the in-app purchases just shoot up after he just said, Hey, you know, here's what my app does. And so I broke it down a little bit and I was like, you want to lead with some of the benefits and Bart did a really good job on this. I didn't help him at all, but like make a resume that wins interviews. So it's leading with, again, you want to sell the customer on what they're going to achieve with your app, not what they can do within your app. You know, it's not like, Hey, build a great resume. No, nobody wants to build a great resume. They want to win the interview. They want to land the job. And so you want to really take that customer on what they're going to get versus what they have to do to get there. And so I think Bart does a really good job with that. Yeah, it's the, I mean, the, 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 the classic question, will you kiss the girl just when you say hi or you will flip a little bit? So it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like uh, everyone is, 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 is uh, trying to know you before they buy. So, yeah. I mean, th th this, is a, this is very important. I mean, it's, it's, it seems like funny, but this is very important. It's a very delicate okay. uh, balance between did you understand what my app does and then you want to proceed to buy it or I didn't understand anything. What they are asking me for 29, I mean, $25 per year. I mean, I don't even, and I, I don't even get the point. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's flirting. I mean, teasing the, the user to, to buy here. It's a very delicate uh, equilibrium here. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hi, what the, I want to move on to the next thing, but before I do, I want to do want to say hi to a couple of people, Joe, good to see you, man. Hi, Sam, good vibes. And Fiox, I'll say that. Yeah. Isan, how's it going, brother? And then Adrian, Patrick, oh, good to see you. Adrian is, is a good customer. Who, Adrian? Yeah, Adrian, yeah, yeah. Celtic yeah, Whispers, nice. great up. Yeah, yeah, he's out in Ireland. And XOR Games, and then Record Scanner, how you guys doing? The other thing I wanted to talk about, Haim, is one of the things that we talk about, we have case studies on this. So this client of ours, he's pretty much 5X's revenues adding trials. And I informed him, I was like, trials are important. And he's like, well, Steve, people can use the app for free up to a certain point, and then they get locked out. And I was like, well, we A-B tested this. He listened to me. We added trials to this pricing page. So sort of like this onboarding flow that we see here. Let me try to bring this back up. This one now, I think this one both has trials. Yeah. So Bart has trials on both of them, but we added trials because I told him like 60% come from the onboarding screen. So you're going to yeah. have to add trials. Is it hard to one dynamically put these trials, right? Like, so if you want to change from a three day trial to a seven day trial, and I want to AB test more like trial lengths, is it hard to dynamically put that in? And then the pricing, the dynamic pricing here, is that pretty hard to do or is that pretty easy to do? I mean, it's, it's not that that uh, hard to do, but not, I mean, what you need is if you want to do some uh, A-B split test is to remotely manage the amount of days that you want to go with the trial. Um, or you can do it hard-coded. Hard-coded, that means you need, the users will need to reinstall the app or install an upgrade. To, to see the new the new way to do it. But uh, we did for a common customer that we have, we were talking about this some time ago, um, should take something around, I don't know, uh, doing something like this. Uh, I mean, all the all this process for adding this tutorial, we were talking about 15 hours, and then like, I don't know, 25 hours to do it dynamically from Firebase, for example, uh, to change the number of the, uh, trial days. Okay, it's, it's, I mean, it's something in the middle. It's not that that simple to do, but and then you need to test. So, so I will shoot for twenty five hours, or something like this. Okay, that's great <laughs> insight. This is why I wanted to talk to you about because as I'm recommending certain features and certain things that will help drive growth, I'd love to get some sense of like how much development cost this is. Cause I do think that's important. And one of the reasons why I ask is, you know, there's a campaign that I love and you, we did it with a pretty big client and I'll share my screen with you guys. So feel free to jump. Ooh, this looks good. So you guys have heard me talk about this. If you guys joined a long time and Adrian, this would work well for your app too, but it's called an app advice campaign. And what we typically do is like, for example, here, 
This is one of our clients actually, and we do a 30 day trial. So we have to, to get on app advice, think of it like a Groupon for apps. You have to, if you have a subscription based app, you have to do a 30 day trial on one of your subscription plans. And so you can do a remove ads, you know, in-app purchases for free, but with subscription based apps, obviously you only have subscriptions, no non-consumable in-app purchases. And so when we do a 30 day trial, we can pitch them, get pressed for it. And that can drive thousands of downloads. And one of my bigger clients, he's like, Steve, how do I do that with this other app? You know, they've got a couple of apps. And so even the big guys are like, whoa, that was cool because the amount of downloads, they're all good that you can drive with this campaign. It's just none other. And it doesn't really cost you anything besides, you know, hopefully working with Hyman and then just being like, I want to add this 30 day trial. How do you dynamically do that too? So uh, you prepare all the, all the graphics and then uh, the, there will be dynamic fields and then into the app, uh, you will be a time limit for this. And mm. then you can remotely uh, change the amount of days or the amount of features that you want to lock. I mean, the idea is to prepare everything to be remotely triggered by something that uh, is, uh, is present at a server. Okay. So, I mean, if you want to, uh, the more features and the more uh, elements that you want to prepare to be dynamically managed remotely, the more the, the number of hours, okay? And then uh, maybe if you have everything uh, that will be static, like uh, we call it hard coded, okay? You yeah. cannot dynamically modify that. The more features, I mean, giving a, a number of hours here will be kind of risky because the more features that you want to modify, maybe you want to lock or unlock levels, Maybe you want to uh, remember that we did something together, like remove for for uh, songs app, remove all the all the locks for seven days, and then mm -hmm. uh, we will try, it. and then uh, like a like a full demo for seven days, and then yeah. uh, you change it to something else, like remove half of them to to track what was the the best uh, strategy for this customer. So depending on the features, uh, but. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a particular case in, in every, but we are always talking about a, a base of 10 hours to just make it work from remotely, then depending on the number of features that you want to, to lock, unlock, modify the number, et cetera, we need to work per, per feature based, the, the, how, many, how many hours you need to add on the top of that. I mean, it's not something that expensive, that the, but you need to, to, to modify several factors, several elements at the app itself. One of the things, one I pointed out right here, heads up is doing it. So heads up, if you guys aren't familiar with it, they have in-app purchases. So I don't think they have subscriptions yet, but they have in-app purchases where you can buy different packs. And so they made one of their packs for free. It's a non-consumable in-app purchase, and then they get pressed for it and that drives thousands of downloads and the, the trial feature. So trials you can do with an app store connect. That's why I was asking you, Haim, like, hey, if I change this on App Store Connect, can the code make sure it pulls yeah. and change it from a seven day trial to a 30 day trial? And so all that, like, as long as the developer has set that up properly, dynamically to pull, exactly. you can then, you, the marketer or the business owner can control all that, all the pricing and the trial links within App Store Connect. All right. Because yeah. the, because the, the building is the, the, the opposite way. I mean, you're not, yeah. you, you start, thinking about what will be your biggest uh, feature, then for a minor feature, you will offer a trial in order to teach the people, okay? But you need to take all this in account when you build the app. I mean, if you can, you can start building the app uh, with all this in mind, so that will be easier, even easier to do it because you already are building that to be dynamically or remotely modified just for testing uh, purposes. You know what, I'm gonna pull this because I wanna make sure people understand that people heads up is actually doing it too. Cause when you get a big game like that, <laughs> I want to make sure people understand I mean, it, right? it is a good campaign. <laughs> works for everyone. I mean, it's not just, I mean, yeah. they are not doing anything special. All yeah. Professional people like you working for them, for them <laughs> all the time and trying and trying and trying and trying. I mean, there's no exact formula for the same product. So yeah. they are trying all the time. Yeah, I'm what, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. When we when we're doing these free app audits and on YouTube, we see a lot of these like tooltip type of things where people are like, here, you know, as you can see, like 
here is how you do this, you know, go here. And then here is how you do this. When you see something like that, maybe when you're working with the developer, they have it in their Figma files and they have some, Hey, I want to do this. What do you think about that? And how do you, like, how do you work with somebody who wants to do these tool tips? It's not the, I mean, what I, I know from the UI UX uh, point of view is that uh, number one, your design should be self-explanatory. That's the principle uh, under the UI UX. Uh, if you still consider or you didn't get it to do it uh, in the way that is self-explanatory, that the user does what you intended for him to do, then you need to start adding some visual clues for him to follow. Uh, having said that, I won't be exaggerating too much, adding too much pepper and too much pop-ups and tool tips for everybody because you kind of lost it. I mean, it's like it should be one yeah. here and there is okay for me. And then everyone is knowing on, on, on tool tips is like annoying. It's like, you know, it's like you want to, you are, you are on, 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 Microsoft Word, okay? And you start to receive the, the clip and you start to jump this and jump that, and jump this and jump that. And then you want to just write in it, just write something that you need to do it very fast. If you start jumping around, I mean, one is okay. Maybe, you know, like the old, the, the old the clip, the paper clip that was on the, on the bottom left. And then if you start seeing pop-ups all around this kind of annoying one, maybe it's, it's okay i won't abuse about that depending again depends on every specific case yeah is it, is it hard is it hard to build those type of features all those tool tips no. okay no. so it's pretty no. easy all right Please. yeah i try to stay away from them but you know sometimes you just never know when somebody can do it all right the before we hit into an app audit the I wanted to talk to you about this. And I think this is a major concern for a lot of these. I just talked to somebody yesterday about how they're planning to build an app, whether they should go web versus app. Actually, let's talk about that. Haim, if you have an opinion on this, this was a question that was posed to me. He's like, Hey, you know, I have this app idea. Theoretically, you know, they have Figma files for an app. They have all the screens done. Should we build this on the web first or should we build this on the app? Like what, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so the the discussion about the web versus app is basically what we will have is a marketing or distribution uh, dilemma. Okay, so in the in the web realm, you need to do SEO, you need to do the web marketing, and then on this, if the app is a mobile app, will be distributed through the Google Play or the the Apple uh, market. Okay, so uh, their market, sorry. So basically we are talking about number one on a marketing dilemma. The number two is, is the app worth it to be installed on the phone or I can use now and then, and then I can just in install a shortcut to this mm -hmm. web app. Okay, so because again, you don't use more than four or five apps all the time. Okay, so the, another another question should be, I need to be upgrading the app or the app should be modified every X, I mean, a short time period. So I will do it web because web, you can remotely change anything that you need. And then, but then in the other hand, you see that big apps, I mean, the, the, the classic one, you know, Instagram, Google, Mail, I don't know, uh, all kind of, uh, the, all kind of uh, popular apps, they, they work through the app because through the app store, because it's, it's a marketing issue. Most, I mean, everything that they do, they can do it web. Okay, it's about the same. But the, the question is more about marketing. And if you consider that this is important enough for the user to have installed on the phone. Okay, a uh, uh, last point could be if your app is depending on a, a lot of uh, technical devices or, or, or sensors from, from the phone. If it's uh, relying heavily on the camera, on the gyroscope, on the GPS, uh, uh, inclinometer, uh, I don't know, uh, etc. So in this case, if you need a very fast operations on the app, I don't know, you know, the, those apps that they, they do the face swap, 
that they, you need to do image uh, recognition, and then uh, you need to do uh, to operate on the image to extract the face, put it in a different place, or putting a, I don't know a dog nose or something like this. This should be done in a, in, in an app per se, because yeah. it's too yeah. slow to come to go to the server and come back again. Okay, I mean depending on the app, but basically. Uh, what I will go is should the user install this on the phone? Will use it every every day, every minute, or is something that uh, will be better for me to modify every few days, and then will be always updated, uh, and I can do it from from the web. Okay, those are the classical uh, factors to wait before yeah. going yeah. after. But uh, I mean, is is uh, most of the times going for an app. For a native app is more hype than than the real name mm. yeah i said the same thing i said hey if you know because they're so early on in the journey if there's some things depending on the type of app and the functionality that you want maybe there's some things that you can test on the web first and yeah. foremost test the hypotheses this is it's just a little bit easier because they're trying to do a fitness app and trying to change some things. So if you're trying to change the behavior of some people and you can do it executed on the web, I try to do that because it's just way cheaper and you can test quickly versus, you know, doing an app, waiting for a review, making sure yeah, you have the, all, in the, in the, all this stuff. In the fitness specific scenario, depending really on the app, because if you need a, a step counter, uh, yeah. You will need the app. Uh, I mean, the app because operate is native on the phone. If you, I mm -hmm. mean, you are just showing a list of exercises to be done, and, and a time tracker is webby. Okay, is is is. I mean, you don't need to go after after an app, and maybe you can add all kind of uh, videos and all kind of help from the web perspective, and then yeah, it's a good it's a good idea to test it on web first. Again, depending on on the app itself. Right. All right. Yash has a question. Hey, hi. I have a small question. Yeah. Would like to know the number of push notification a general application should look forward to sending to their users. Do you have any insights on how, how often you should be sending push notifications? Uh, again, what is your app about? If your app is a news app, you will send in all the time uh, yeah. a news notification, and then you will put a menu. Do you want to get all the uh, news uh, in a condensed push one per day? Or you want, I mean, I, the, the push is very short. I mean, the information that I can put is very short. I can put a link, or you want to receive the news in real time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for other applications that they don't need to be bombarding the user with notifications. I mean, if you have a, a mail app, you can, the user will want to get those push, push notifications. If you are telling the uh, buy my app, buy my app, buy my app, upgrade, 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 <laughs> the only thing that you will get is uh, the app removed as soon as possible. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like uh, depending on, on, on what the app is about, okay? Uh, put yourself, always put yourself in your user shoes, okay? Do you want to be annoyed with something that uh, is not necessary to be, to be, I mean, even, even, you know, there are a lot of apps, they are doing it once per week, once per month, once right. per, oh, hey, you didn't log in after X days, okay? But this is something that you will do gradually after two days, after five days, after 15 days, not bombarding the user all the time. Remember that they, maybe they were not aware that when they stole the app, that they will be receiving, uh, all the time they will be receiving, um, pushes okay again if you have something that is a news reload on real time yes if it's not no so the 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 the, the less the the more here okay yeah yeah all right let's go in oops let me go this adrian asks has anyone tried the app store event submission i like to see an example we there's somebody in our mastermind if you go if you're part of the app masters academy somebody did put that submission in, but app, if you guys aren't familiar, the app store events could potentially Apple's going to start featuring those a little bit. And so Halloween's coming up, Thanksgiving's coming up. It's a great way to try to get some like seasonal things in there. And so app store events, like, yeah, if you're in that mastermind, there's an example in that Facebook group where somebody posted that too. Are you starting to build app store events at all? Heim? App Store events? No, not yet. Okay. All right. 
XOR games. How do you clean up bad store, bad reviews on the iOS app store? So you can just start over <laughs> if you want. You you can you can look after each one somehow and then push them with a gun. But yeah. the, ideally, what you do is trying to get the good reviews to to be. I mean, I will suspect heavily on on any app that they don't have any bad reviews because it sounds like cheesy, sounds like like fake. But uh, if you have a, a good amount of good reviews and then you have few lemons now and then, it's, I mean, it's perfectly okay. You cannot like everyone. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. Yeah. yeah, you can reset it or you can just try to reply, do everything you can. Be careful. Sure. If you're gonna, yeah. Be careful yeah. if you're starting to buy reviews. Apple is starting to know when that happens. So be very, very careful if you're going to buy positive yeah. reviews. But in fact, we do it. We do it with with some with some customers that we have. Mm. I mean, I do it my, myself personally. Do uh, what? They have a contact on the app. If you have any technical problem, just send us a message, and then I I call them. Leave leave a number. I call them by by phone, and then uh, maybe there is a punctual. I mean, a, 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 a punctual issue, or there is some something that we are developing in the middle. Uh, we were talking the, this week with someone that was really happy that we told her that thank you to, to her feedback. She was really angry. Uh, we discovered that we need to add a very necessary feature. And yeah. then she was really happy that we took her in account. So we do that, yeah, to avoid bad reviews. Yeah, and I'll show you my, my app. You know, we have 201 reviews. And that the way that I've told people to do is just show it on second open. And that's how I've been able to generate so many positive reviews is I just show it that default iOS prompt on second open. I don't wait, you know, it's just boom. You open the second time. Cause if you look at the percentages, the percentage of somebody opening your app for the second time is very low. So they yeah. must like your app. They're opening it again for the second time. All right. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So the, all right. Yash says, thanks for the insight time. You're welcome. You're welcome. Rudy. Evening, guys. I kind of stopped following the iOS 15 related app store changes. No, Rudy, the AB test features are not live yet. I will let you guys know too, because a lot of people want to know. I want to know personally too. So unfortunately, it's not live yet. And then Yash says, does keyword and reviews help in ASO? It used to, Yash, in 2015 when I first discovered it. Not so much anymore, but worth testing. But right now, back then, it was just one review increased in app store right in keyword rankings but not so much anymore all right hey i'm i want to get into our app audit and our jokes but one thing i want to highlight here too is if you guys didn't see this apple is doing these ted talks and so <laughs> this will be the video that i create <laughs> it'll be easier for me but essentially what you can do is sign up for these office hours and sessions with app store managers and it's a great way to try to get an app store feature one get feedback from an app store manager because they'll give you some really great insights and two remember that app store manager name so if i was talking to Heim, who's at apple and I'll be like, oh thanks for the great insights what was your name again and then he'll say hi and i'll be like, okay great and then you know i'll try to build, build some rapport with it and so I listen to their changes, I do their feedback, and then I go back to Haim and Haim, thanks for the great insights. We publish all those features. We'd love, you know, if you can consider us for an app store feature. And that's how we've been able to get, or a lot of our clients get app store features. And one person in our apps, App Masters Mastermind, he was able to land an app of the day feature off the WWDC hack that I shared, but this is the same thing as what you would do on WWDC, but Apple is starting to let this go later on too. So they might do this twice a year, but sign up. It is Ted talks. So developer.apple.com slash Ted dash talks. All right. All that is in there. Ted talks number two. I'm sure you can Google it and find it just fine, but sign up for one of these sessions if you're looking for a feature. All right. That's a really clever way to, to get featured. Yeah. Hi, my favorite part of the show. You ready to do a dad joke? You want sure. me to go first? Or you want to go first? You go first. Your right, English is better. <laughs> yeah. Going second is a lot better. <laughs> uh, let me pull up everything. Get my sound effects ready. I need better ways of doing sound effects. I probably should throw something up here on. I probably could do it here. Video clips. They have audio clips. Uh, anyways. Here we go. Let me do this real quick. 
This is the only way I can set. Okay. All right, I'm. I did all Halloween. I love Halloween. Okay. It's one of my holidays in the states. It's coming up on Sunday. We're having a Halloween party on Saturday, which is a few close family members. So I'm gonna do Halloween theme. All right. Heim, uh, which one do I like? <laughs> what do you call two witches who live together? What do you call two witches that live together? No clue. Brewmates. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That, that, what do you got? Okay. So do you like uh, statistics? I mean, you are a very, very analytical guy and you like uh, statistics. So you know that uh, about the Russian roulette, Five out of six people think that the play is really safe. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that's a that's it a dark takes one. A while, it takes a while to see, but that's a high one. That's a I mean that's a dark one. <laughs> uh, six bullets. All right. No one, just one, one bullet. Just one, right? One person got lucky. One person no, got lucky. It's, 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 it's a nice joke about about the statistics. You know, it's like. He said this is, can explain things in both ways. I like it. All right. Well, we'll get into this app. Vivek. Vivek. Oh, Huss is the other. Huss. Okay, cool. Huss. All right. Vivek asks about ASO for this app. So, unfortunately, I can't get the game because it's not available. It's yeah. only available in India. So, but we can go look at the ASO. And then the crazy thing, Heim, that I noticed too was for the Android, they just give you the APK. They're not even going through. <laughs> so I was like, wow, okay. So we'll just focus on iOS. No, no, no ASO there. <laughs> yeah. No, no maybe. ASO, I... Look, I was thinking, I, I, I was cheating when you sent me the links. And I was uh, thinking maybe they already put it also on the Google Play in a different link. Mm -hmm. Or they, they could do it. Uh, I mean, even after giving the, the APK. But the logical the logical thing will be to put a link into the into yeah, the might, Google. They might this is Huss's app. So I think they might have put it into Google Play too. But it, it's yeah. it's kind of funny what happened. Yeah, it happened, it happened the same to me. Yeah, it was funny. We can look it up. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so here it is. So, so so the idea will be to put a link there. To increase the the downloads, no? You are, yeah, you are I think so too. I think so too. So ten million downloads are doing really well. Looks like they're doing well on i on iOS as well. Number two in card, so really good stuff. Let's just yeah. focus on I guess iOS because that's what I pulled up right now. I think what I like to do is whoa, okay. What I like to do is go into App Annie anytime I'm talking to a client. Right, like hey Steve, you know I'm helping. Can you help me with your with ASO and I'm like, okay, sure. Like if I know nothing about the app, what I go into app Annie is and then I'm like trying to figure out what they currently rank for, for some of these keywords. So app Annie is a great tool for just to get a sense of where they're at. And looks like jungle rummy. I don't know if this is a type of rummy game, but it looks like they're doing well for play rummy rummy. And then rummy is number five. And so what I try to do, and I kind of looked this up too, was like, how well are they ranking on iOS for Rummy in India? It says they're number five. They're number five right here. They're doing good. I think what I would be testing is, do you, you notice this time, like where both all these apps are repeating Rummy yeah. in the title and subtitle? So I don't know if that's a good trick. I, we're trying to test that on our end to see if that would help with ASO rankings, but that's a good scenario i think what i yeah. would be considering is you know like frankly I, I hate to say this but there's a black hat strategy called you know keyword installs and i would consider doing that and i think the reason why this guy is ranking well with less reviews is because they are leading off with rummy versus you have play rummy so i would start testing that a little bit if you can go rummy game and then at juggle rummy which is your the actual name of your app that's what i would start testing is can you lose play and just have rumming game jungle rummy type of thing okay another thing that maybe is useful is to test with the misspellings of rummy because rummy yeah. maybe is like the there's a why there is or maybe someone writes in a like a, a rammy yeah rummy or a AI kind of yeah in the room also. 
Yeah. So, and I'm just looking at the keywords and I, I have tried testing this. So this is just a suggestion. I have no data to back this up where when I look at, so let's just say this, this first app is ranked number one right now with just tiny reviews, right? 291. And I'm thinking through like, what are they doing? So when I click on this open keyword suggestions, this is showing me what Apple search ads would be recommending if they were to run Apple search ads. And so Apple knows the metadata of this app and they can give you like some of the insights on what keywords it might be using. And what I've noticed with these type of apps that have like less than a thousand reviews, but rank really well for these really competitive keywords is it's very specific to that app. Right. So I've, I've been trying to figure out ways to do this where maybe I'll repeat Rummy a bunch of times, or maybe all the keywords would be related to Rummy, anything around Rummy versus trying to go after competitors or like other games. I'll just have it be, be very narrowly focused on that. So I've been trying to think about ways to test that. And that might just be something that you, you think through as well. And Indian yeah. Rummy was a keyword that. Mm, okay, they don't rank that well for Indian Rummy. Another right here, the number five again. No, is that them? No, this is not them. No, no, no. No, no it's Django. It's Django. Yeah. No, no, he's not there. Yeah, it's not. So that's what I would be testing from an ASO standpoint. Keyword install campaigns I, 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 work. I, the next one, the next one is, is there. The next one oh, right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they do rank number nine. Yeah, but it's... Nine. Yeah, yeah. So Rummy game... Indian Rummy, and then maybe lose, you might even want to lose your, your app name if it doesn't yeah. apply because it's already in here. So you're going to rank for it anyways. All right. Real. And then, uh, yeah, said real cash games are not allowed in Google play India. Okay. They're alive. But um, I, I don't think that they are offering real cash here, right? They are offering it does some, some okay. say that some say that chips, free chips. Yeah. I think that they work with chips and then you can redeem that with the right because it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I do like their screenshots, ten thousand yeah. free chips, Perfect. thirty million players, all that stuff. It's a lot of social proof there. Mm. Oh, they're doing that. So I tried this little thing too, where I tried this little flag, this A V test. This is for a client where we were it's available everywhere, but I was like India was one of the biggest markets for them, and I put a little Indian flag in their app icon and try to do an AB test. We didn't really find a big winner, but I do like this trick where if you are Indian specifically for that market, like show some pride, right? Like put that flag in there. And I think it would probably works better for them versus not having the Indian flag, you know, like, especially because they have Indian rummy in the actual title, but I, I like this. And that's, that's a trick we re ran on Google play too, as an AB test. But I, I might try it here too, you know, see what happens. See what happens yeah. there. Yeah, I like it. Anything else on this end, Lime? I think no. overall they're doing a phenomenal job. Like this is great No, stuff. it's very professional. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. they are really well. Yeah, jungle. The only thing again running. is the, the, the APK not to be downloaded from there because those downloads won't, won't help the, the yeah. algorithm they will play. Yeah. Yeah, and then the keyword installs, we have seen pretty good success on Google Play. We've been able to run a few times and seeing pretty good results with that. So think about that. Because there's only so much you can do from an ASO. It's like, duh, have things in the title, subtitle, all that stuff. And what else can you do? It is Black Hat, so run at your own risk. But it, it has been effective for a few of the things that we've been working on too. All right. Cool. All right, Haim, the other thing. Oh. I have a game. I have a game. I have a game, Haim. All right. Yeah. Let me, let me pull it up. And then we're going to get into how do you properly plan for so that you can avoid additional costs. All right, guys. Everybody ready? Hey, nobody voted for a dad joke winner. Put in the comments whose dad joke you like better. We haven't been doing dad jokes in the last couple of weeks. So I miss you, Haim. All right. All right, guys. So C for Haim. If you like the dad joke, S for Steve. All right, we have somebody that emailed me from the YouTube audience. He's going to come on in a couple of weeks. So I was super excited to break down what he did. But just to give you a little preview, his sales went from $250 a month to $750 a month, optimizing his pricing page, testing a lot of things, following some of the advice that we've been sharing on YouTube with the longer pricing page, all that jazz. How many daily downloads do you think he has? 
five downloads, 15 downloads, 25 downloads, or 50 downloads. So really, how many downloads do you think the minimum? Because I've been promoting Heim. You don't need that many downloads to start optimizing for the product. So how many downloads do you think you have? You have, what about you, Heim? What do you think? Me? I how, what do you think how many down downloads? What do you think the answer is here? Uh, 15. 50? Yeah. Okay, cool. Everybody leave in the comments. Oh, Maybe put- B, uh, B, B, option B. Oh, option B. Okay, cool. 50. I don't know if these answers are for a vote for Heim. I forgot Heim in search of C here, but vote for Heim or if you guys are thinking how many downloads this person had to, okay? So the answer is actually, you're right, Heim, it's 15. So he only had 15 downloads a day and he's able to triple his revenues and shows you the power of what I've been talking about. And I loved it. And I was like, dude, thank you so much for sending this email. Cause I thought it was 25, but minimum 25. That was just like, guessing me guessing. Right. But he's like, look, Steve, I only get 15 downloads a day. And I've been looking at my pricing page, really following some of the things you've been sharing. And he's been able to triple his revenues. So it shows you the power of optimizing your pricing page, the onboarding process, all that stuff. Stop thinking you need more downloads. You don't need more downloads. You need to optimize a lot of the, the pricing page, the onboarding sequence, everything that we've been talking about. So I just love this case study and he's going to come on a future live stream. So if you guys got some wins please email me i love send getting these emails nothing really jazzes me up than getting those emails for that all right and then joe said excited for that live stream me too joe two weeks two weeks we'll be there all right Heim, how yeah. do you go about properly planning so that for your app so that you don't avoid you know you don't overpay and you have the right yeah. budget in mind is it just having the Figma files? What what can we do when we have an app idea, we want to get it out there, we want to work with you, I'm to build it. How do we make your job easier? First of all, I want to I want to explain that today uh, is the this is very important because we are experimenting a big uh, drought in the number of developers, the available developers all around the world. Why? Because it's very logical, it was very logical from the, the beginning. You know, the number of developers, uh, the good developers, is a uh, short, uh, small number. And every day, new niches, new industries, new needs are added to the list of uh, people that they need good developers. Okay. So there is, uh, although there, has, there is a lot of courses, online courses, training, uh, governments uh, going after the youth and the unemployed to train them for a, for a development, I mean, for developing to, to writing code. The reality is that uh, it takes more than that to get a good developer, okay? Maybe in the future we will have better methods to do this, but today good developers are in a higher uh, required. So, this is a, a good point to consider when you want to develop your own app or upgrade your app, developing something extra, because the cost rise up. The demand of the developers is is, is shrinking, and the, the 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 offer is very low. Okay, every country, everyone that I I talk with, I mean, every day I get. Uh, colleagues uh, that they are calling me do you have one developer for this technology or that technology and i say i'm requiring myself for our needs at bit 7 dev uh, but anyways uh, the ideal is to work on the idea okay work on the idea do your homework first okay write everything ask everyone about the idea what you will do what you want to try to optimize all the process try to to simplify the process and as as i always uh, maintain uh, you need to create a company not just an app okay so you need to think in every single step of the business to make it a successful uh, business okay it's not just the app the app itself is nothing okay consider every single factor if you don't know how to do it send me an email i can help you we 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 can offer this kind of service to help you build and to plan and, and to do the plan for how to develop what to develop first going for the main thing first and then for the accessory 
Okay, uh, if you already have a document that explains what the app will do, you can send that to us, we will check it and we will tell you, okay, based on our experience, we think that you are missing this and this and that, okay, maybe we can think about a solution for this, or uh, you can do some wireframes on every available uh, option for wireframes, even hand sketch it and then scan it and then send it to me or to any developer, okay, that will help. But the, the development for any app is very precise, okay? Developers think as a computer, they, they live in a box and they, if you say, uh, if you click this, this button, the, the app should do that, they will do exactly that. They won't think about all the rest of the, the, the implications, okay, the integrations. So you need to be really exp really uh, precise, really self-explanatory with everything, never under a uh, consider that, ah, no, no, the app is supposed to do this, okay? So so I thought that all those uh, features, uh, with and bells should be included on the price, okay? So the hour of development is increasing his value. You need to properly and carefully planify everything okay ask for help if you don't know how to do it or start start uh, sketching your screens and then uh, talk with someone that does development to avoid common pitfalls that will be saving you money putting the money on what really is important and not on uh, to, to i mean you need to start up the, the the app development and finish the app development not to stay without money in the middle because you go back and forth you don't know if that will be maybe now maybe later you need to go with the specific plan of action okay this is very important trust me uh, the prices of development are, are going really high okay so it's very important the planning is very important if you don't know how to do it very simply draw me a line okay and, and i will help you we we get the calls every every day every week from uh, people that is watching this and they say i don't know how to we have this idea i don't know how to start it so we start uh, planning fine doing the plans doing the pipeline for the proper development you can develop with us if you want to you can develop with someone else but with the proper documentation I like it Haim, are you seeing more people I'm seeing a lot of people use Figma and stuff. Or is that is that something that you should Everything, do? Yeah. Too? Yeah. Should you use yeah. Figma to try to pull out some initial design so that you can sort of connect different things and show off to developers? Yeah. Is that helpful for you guys? Yeah, yeah, they are using it very much. It's really nice because you can, with the same tool, you can prepare the screens mm -hmm. and then you can prepare interactive uh, prototypes. That is something that is even you know is is a is a delicacy for a developer when you send something that is animated and you tap on the screen and then the next screen appears. I mean, there is no discussion later yeah. about what was your original idea, but it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's a delicacy that you get. When you get this, you say, oh, this guy is really, really prepared, really clever. He, he's yeah. doing an interactive uh, uh, demo for everyone to see. You can go to investors with this. You can go to all kinds of people and they will really understand what you are talking about. I love it. All right, Haim, we're, I got to jump to our, we got a call right after this with our mastermind. We do a monthly hangout. So if you guys want to join that, keep in touch because we're going to open that up to a broader community and give you guys more access to that. But let's end it with Huss has been waiting patiently. And so let's get Huss's app on there, but I'll started with the dad joke. I'm, I'm going to give you the win last time. There's a lot of C's could be the, I don't know where the C's are, but you want to start or you want me to start this last dad joke round? No, you go. You're, you're the okay. host. Uh, how do vampires start their letters? Vampires start their letters. Tomb, it may concern. <laughs> All right. Well, you, go ahead, you, you broke it. Okay. So what is, what is, 1,000 times better than Instagram. What is 1,000 times better than Instagram? Instant kilogram. <laughs> Instant kilogram. I like it. Okay. Uh, you want right. the last one. I prepared three. Okay, go for it. Okay, okay. So how a computer or a, a phone get drunk? How? They drink a lot of screenshots. 
I'm on a kick. I, I'm on a All right, let's give Heim the win. All right, let's give it up. Heim did a great job, Heim. That was really awesome. I need a, a better soundboard so I can have more sounds on here. All right, let's get into Huss's app. And Huss wanted us to finding the right balance of monetization with ads. And it looks like Huss was saying, by the way, AdMob has paused my app because they did nowhere. There were no ads overlapping content. Didn't tell me where, so I started making changes. Get back, back. Okay, and then you guys are voting for Heim. I know I'm on that. I'm not even trying to trying to win that anymore. All right, uh, it's hard to find Halloween jokes. That's all I would say. Whoops. Let me share my screen. All right, so it looks like it's a game. Oh, whoops. There. Our uh, better rotate this. All right, I'm gonna pull up the ASO on this on Huss a little bit. There's some sound coming through. Just to give you guys a sense of what the app is. So it's Rainbow Ball. Looks like a brain game for kids. That's what I'm seeing. I see a lot of kids. So I'm hoping Huss, this is a game for kids. And then you got 10,000 plus downloads. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. The graphics are really, I mean, simple, but but really nice for kids. Yeah, so I'm gonna put that in there. All right. Cool. Graphics are really important to to catch the eye when you are trying to sell something. The, I I cannot highlight this enough. Yeah, I think, Hus, if you can put in the comments if it is for kids, just because I see a lot of kids. What I also notice is kids games tend to do better when there's like a a picture of a smiling kid. Right. So think about the app icon, maybe AB test that with some p imagery that you have here. If it is for kids, I don't know if it is specifically, but if it's not for kids, then oh look, it is for kids. Okay, good. I said, I guess it's for everybody, but if you are going for kids, then go after that. And then 60 download down. So, oh, that's awesome, man. So it's got up to 60,000 downloads. Okay, let's start. Mm, bowling ball, large, heavy, with barely any bounce. Let's go tennis ball. Draw a line with your finger. Don't know what I'm exactly what to do. No, you, you need to, yeah. You need to draw a line, and then the, the, the ball will bounce on the line. Oh, got it, got it. It's like one of those finger games. Yeah. Got it. If I mean, uh, I, I really love this app. The only thing that I can I can say is that for for smaller kids maybe the font that font is hard to read yeah and okay so i don't know when the ads are coming maybe hus you i was told to move away from the kids market okay, maybe right that, that's that's up to you to the thing that all right here's what i I wanted to see too. So when the ads, if you think about, we have one client that is a game, so I'll, I wouldn't say I'm a game expert right now, but when I'm, when we're thinking about a game, they got good downloads. So we're able to do some ASO for him. And we're now we've like gone from just like one or two downloads to like 50 plus downloads a day now. And so the ASO is good. And I'm like, Hey, let's figure out how to make more money. Let's stop worrying about getting more downloads for this. And what I would say for this is if you look at any of the top games out there, they have in-app purchases, right? And so right now, I feel like it's a simple game. It's well done. But think about in-app purchases too. I know it's on Google, so you're probably going to have to rely on ads. But I would still think about in-app purchases because you need a bigger ecosystem. Part of what I'm seeing is, and a lot of what good games do is, when you play a game, you use up energy. And if you, you stop people from playing, right? It's like, hey, you're out of energy. Do you want to watch a video? So you have to start incorporating a, what I call a more elaborate ecosystem, like shopping, all this stuff, coins. What we've seen pretty well done with other clients is they'll give away coins like this Jim Rummy game. You'll say, look, sign up and you get like 5,000, 10,000 coins or something, right? They give it to you. And then you go, you want to double your coins and watch a video? And we've seen really good results with that too. And so you have to think about better ways of incorporating these ads than just being like, oh, you finished the level. Let me show the ad. So when I finish a level, 
I get coins that I could possibly use to buy other things, other balls, customize my balls. And then with that, you know, you, you have that sort of like, I don't know if it's the right word, but ecosystem, like a elaborate or Yeah, it's gamification and then uh, yeah. uh, doing it more and more uh, part of the, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's an ecosystem into the app, yeah. not just okay. the playing dryly videos, but the, mostly it's gamification. Yeah, and then Joe says, okay, Joe's helping out us. Great, Joe's great. If you have ads, either banners or native in a table view, you need to make sure only one ad is ever shown as you scroll. And then he's planning to do iOS, especially if you're trying to do iOS, like that's where you can do in-app purchases. And that's what I'm pushing my, my, my client to do is, hey, we need to build out a bigger ecosystem. We, we're getting the downloads and we're comparing with other competitors. And if you look at the competitors, it is customization. So I, I did an interview with the uh, founders of Fun Run back in the day, and they noticed that customization is a huge thing. So if you think about games like this, if I want to customize a ball, get a different type of ball, those are the things that people really want to engage with. Because if it's the same thing over and over again, they're gonna, your retention is going to really go down. Right. Yeah, well, you know that the Facebook is changing. I mean, the, the company is going to the metaverse. So they yeah. are planning to do it big on the on the prop uh, customization. I mean, you yeah. will pay for having your props into the virtual virtual world and then not so much ads, but the customization. I mean, it's, it's the the next big thing for this kind of uh, this kind of applications. I don't know, but yeah. Hus, let me know if that was useful for you and, you know, if there's any other feedback and if things start working out, you know, let me know, just let me know afterwards too. And if you guys want to get it audited, your apps, just go to appmasters.com slash audit, appmasters.com slash audit. All right. Now, Haim, thank you so much for coming on. If you want to work with Haim and his team, all you got to do is go to the letter B, the number seven dev.com. It is linked up into the YouTube description. I've known Haim for many, many years. I trust the dude. And whenever people are asking, Hey, do you know a developer? I always send people to Heim's way as well. So b7dev.com. If you're interested in working with him, I'm, if the audience wants to connect with you and be like, can you tell me some more dad jokes? Where else do you want to send them? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you can go to b7dev.com, the letter B as in banana, number seven dev as development.com. Or you can search after my name, Heim, uh, like it's written like like here and then mm -hmm. my name here you have it there uh, you mm -hmm. have the contact page uh, in the website on and uh, linkedin facebook or All that jazz. more easily haim c-h-a-i-m at b7dev.com you draw there me a line is. we will check what you need and then we will try to help you as we I always love do it. i love it Hus. You're welcome. Hope that was helpful. Keep me updated on the progress. I always love to get updates. Yash, thank you so much for coming on. Adrian, thanks team. I love that, Adrian. Thanks team. Yeah, we are a team. Next week, we're going to have a friend of mine who works with a lot of big companies, helping them with their UX, works with Adobe, all that stuff. So we're really going to make break down the UX. I'm going to bring in some of the marketing, what works from a marketing perspective. So stay tuned for that. And two weeks from now, that $15 a day, developer he's going to come on and we're going to break that down as well so join us next week same time friday i'm in i'm here every friday at 9 a.m pacific all right guys have a great weekend happy halloween i'm dressing up we're going to be i'll put some pictures on instagram so follow me there <laughs> at steve p young but we will be the toy story crew so my family's all toy story i will be woody my daughter is buzz and my son's a green army dude and we'll have to convince my wife to dress up I mean, you, is, the, is halloween popular in argentina uh, no, but no. My, my my daughters go to an English school. They, they okay, cool. She just know. Me crazy with this. I mean, they, they, we, I mean, honestly, we grew up even not. I mean, out of the United States and, and Ireland, uh, you know, Celtic uh, countries. There is no hmm. no Halloween, basically. Okay. So <laughs> so. <laughs> so but you know the, the the movies and the and the TV and all the shows and they, they they got me crazy. I need to buy all this stuff. I don't understand why is that for, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. but I didn't grow up with this. And then, uh, yeah, you know, in some countries if you go to ask for candy, they will shoot you. It's not not oh, my geez. case. Yeah, no, no, no. Now just a joke. Uh, yeah, but you know, we, we know that through the TV and the, 
family we have at the United States and etc. But uh, yeah, I know is Adriana. Where is what I'm telling is is an ancient Celtic festival. Yeah, I know that the Adrian does a lot of uh, releases on on his own app uh, cool. about the Halloween. Other Celtic, yeah, yeah it's, everything is Celtic based. I recommend that. that. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, but you know, it's different uses for different different strokes for different folks. So yeah, Adrian, I'm gonna follow up with you. I wanna I wanna get an update on your app too since we last talked as well. All right, yeah. Well, have some fun if you're celebrating it. If not, celebrate anyways. Go get dressed up.